What's up, JR Aviation? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to finally a Cirrus update for our own plane. We have lots of updates for you guys. Everyone has been messaging us. Do you still have the plane? What's the latest on the engine overhaul? Why is it taking so long? Give us updates. We were meaning to film this video like two months ago with an update, but finally we owe you guys some videos and today's a big update. It has been over a year, I think. And definitely over a year since we've bought this plane and I think over a year since we've flown it. Hey, it's gonna be back together very soon. I'd say it's right over there. Let's get talking about yeah. the updates, okay. everything we gotta catch you guys up to speed. Let's go, let's, let's go. go. So of course we still have our beloved Cirrus SR20 right there, but it is still engineless. Where do we begin? Uh, let's start with the good news. The good news would be that finally the aviation mechanic, our AMP that's working on the plane, he got all the final parts, he has everything ready to go, and he's starting to put the engine back together. He just sent us a picture this morning actually, I'll put that up here, look how good it looks. But we had a major expense that we were not anticipating. Yes, I was going to dive deeper on that. So parts was our biggest issue, and there's one part in particular pretty major part, pretty important. The crank case of the engine, the engine block had a notorious crack in it. Off of where the alternator number one, I think, mounts, there is a notorious crack that develops. And sure enough, on our original engine with just 1650 total time on it, it developed that crack and so that case was non-serviceable, overhaulable, and we only realized that after it got sent off to the, the case machine overhaul shop, or yeah. machine shop. And so then we had to order the new updated case. So fortunately, we didn't have to buy the same exact case that's gonna crack further down the line. We could have, we could we, have gone cheap and yeah. gotten the old style case which is not a good idea because yes. it's gonna crack again, probably. There was one for $5,000 all overhauled and ready to go, and we could have been maybe on our way months sooner, but we ordered the new design case, and so hopefully this will now service this engine for many more rebuilds to come. So new case, Christian, that sounds great. We went the safe, smart route. Um, how much did it cost for the viewers out there? Well, it was $12,000. Ouch! For one case, I, I wish that oh, I wish it could just be like half a case, the 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 half that cracks. But it's a whole new case. Buy the whole thing. Twelve thousand dollars. That one hurt. Yeah. And you guys know we come from Ferraris, Lamborghinis. We have those in the garage. What is the most expensive part we've ever had to buy on one of those cars? Probably clutch on the 430, yeah. like a clutch job. Yeah. That was $6,600 with labor. Yeah, that, that's just the part alone. I mean, the most expensive part for any of these cars, sure, a uh, Ferrari 355, the entire engine. True was $10,000. With everything, ready to be bolted in. That's a great example. Yeah, 10,000 bucks accessories. for the entire Ferrari engine or 12,000 bucks for, for one the case of a flat six. Casting. Oh. Oh so not only was that super expensive, but it took a long time to get here. Of course, COVID, like that was a huge slowdown yeah. with all the parts. It wasn't just that part that we needed. You know, it's other things for the entire engine overhaul. It's a lot of stuff you need for that if you're not gonna go buy one brand new off the shelf. The market has been very interesting lately. The market for SR20s and all planes actually has gone through, through the roof. The roof. <laughs> Great. So we were really fortunate between the car market and the plane market. We were fortunate to have a couple uh, horses in the race, a couple things in the garage so that we could ride that wave up. Because if we had to get into the plane market now without being able to have this one, it would be quite the investment. A lot of money. And that's why we always preach finding good deals. It sounds simple, but uh, with, with this plane, we found a private owner who was looking to move it. He was looking to upgrade nice. or something. So we got in it at a very good price that now even after an engine with the resale values raising on them, that surely helped a lot, but we'll yeah. still look pretty good numbers wise. So I think that even if the market didn't see this crazy appreciation, I think we would have come out about even, this was our worst, worst case scenario. And so we figured even if this happened, we would still need to get it at a number where we'd be okay. And I think we would have been okay. But now with the market, we will be coming out on top on this plane. So really, really fortunate. Yeah, that's nice. But we did budget in an overhaul at some point. We thought we'd be able to fly for a couple hundred hours before that came around, but came around a little earlier than we anticipated, but we did budget the money for an overhaul and 
now that's where that money went. That's why we could afford it. That's why we planned it into our uh, expenses with this plane. That's important for you guys out there too. If you're looking for a plane that's approaching overhaul, be careful. Um, you know, obviously get it, get an inspection done. Have somebody who knows what they're doing. Go look at that plane and see maybe how far out an, uh, an overhaul is because they are extremely expensive. Especially if you're coming from like, if you haven't dealt with planes before or exotic cars, yeah. you'll be shocked when you see the numbers. Yeah. So one of two ways, either you factor that into like every hour that you fly the plane, you kind of set some money aside in your piggy bank for an overhaul. That's one way to do it. So, but if you're buying a plane like this sight unseen where that expense might come up sooner rather than later, you can't be shopping at the very, very top of your budget to where if something came up, then you don't have any money left over. So we didn't quite have a whole overhaul's worth of money set aside in the piggy bank, but we were able to move some things around, maybe sell a car yeah, for an really engine. Does. Yikes. Oh man. Well, we got it done. We got yeah. it done and that's where we are today. The reason we're filming this video now is because this is the last time the plane will look like this. Engineless. Dang it, plane going overhead. What is it? I hear a Cirrus. Hey, sure enough. I don't know if it's a 20 or a 22. That'll be us soon. Later today or tomorrow, our mechanic will be coming with our bright new shiny engine. So by the end of this video, we should be seeing our engine for the first time. Yes, we're gonna take a walk around it and see what's going in and all the work that went into that engine so that by next video, it'll be ready for install and hopefully it'll be a smooth install, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe because with the way things have been going, there's always a little something that comes up during the install, so be sure to stay tuned for next video also. Hopefully, that'll be it. What, what else are we working on? Uh, maybe like an annual, that's due, so we could find some stuff there. Uh, just when we think the bloodbath is over, with shelling out money. An annual may discover some new things. Luckily, shouldn't be anything regarding the engine. With the rest of the airframe, you wanna go through it, make sure everything is safe and uh, good to go. So fingers crossed the annual goes smoothly and nothing major is needed or discovered, but if something does pop up, of course, we're gonna get it taken care of, make sure this thing is solid and ready to go. It'll be done shortly after the new motor is installed. Our mechanic's gonna be flying it across the city, to his shop on the other side of town and he'll go through the whole plane and let us know what he finds. So that'll be coming just days after the new motor gets in, our first flight with it. So that'll be coming in a few videos. Yeah, so he'll be taking that first test pilot flight with that new engine. Are we gonna ride with him over to his shop or leave that one uh, to him? So this begs the question, with a fresh engine and a fresh annual, mm -hmm. is this the time to capitalize on this great market? and list the plane for sale. Oh boy, what do you guys think about that? We can't, we can't lie, we've been considering the idea of possibly selling the plane while it's at the peak of the market and then taking those funds and moving into an SR22 for nearly the same price. So you might be thinking, well, okay, you're selling at the top of the market, but then you'd have to be buying and replacing at the top of the market. But it seems like there's a little extra inflation for the SR20 for flight schools or something that mm -hmm. are paying a premium for them and putting them at a really comparable number to an SR22. As we all know, the 22 is a better plane in nearly every Every category of course it burns a little bit more fuel but we were going to be upgrading to a 22 anyway at some point down the line it's just maybe the down the line came a lot sooner because when we were shopping for this plane 22s were available but they were way more money so now that they're almost the same price it's got us thinking so comment down below your opinion on that we haven't made a decision one way or the other just throwing it out there. Let us know if you guys own a 22, is it worth it, over 20, et cetera, et cetera. We are gonna have to take training even more seriously if it was in a 22. 200 horsepower is already the top end of trainers and beginning high performance aircraft, even though the rest of it is simple with fixed gear and a simple prop. That is very true. And speaking of training, some people have been asking about that. And well, we're still working through ground school and stuff because we have a plane that doesn't quite fly right now, so we can't do much training. I know we can be knocking out the ground school and we should have already done that by now, but as you guys know, we've, we've had some other things going on in our lives, including him especially a few market. months ago. Yeah, the car market is also just as hot as the plane market, and so that's been keeping us very busy. So, got a little bit behind on that, as most people do, but certainly not an excuse, and so, 
can totally knock that out. If we do get a 22, probably G1, G2, because those are in our price range. Hit us up if you happen to like have one for sale or something, uh, jraviation33 at gmail.com. Let us know, or if you have any other, other information, we would happily uh, absorb it and listen to what you have to say. Yeah. You guys are always so uh, valuable dropping all those comments down below on our past series videos. There's so much good information in the comment section. Thanks to you guys, all the, all the pilots out there, or AMPs or people who just know the market. You guys really help us out a lot. Yes, absolutely. It, it is interesting looking back, thinking where we were with our first video with the plane. We did not know everything that we know now. And that's thanks to you guys dropping some really great information down below and even meeting a couple of you guys in person and oh, yeah. you guys helping us out in person has been amazing. Thank you, Fish, uh, for the expertise. We're gonna need to move these cars out of the hangar to give them some room to work and he should be coming around first thing. Okay, tomorrow morning. Okay, well, let's cut to moving some cars tomorrow morning to make room for his trailer to back up to get the engine right next to the plane, it going onto the plane. That whole beautiful sequence of events, seeing this thing get an engine back on it for the first time in many, many months. The next day. All right, check that out. We got a jet flying over. We got the hangar door opening and we got a nice, bright, sunny day today. Uh, the mechanic just let us know that he is 10 minutes out with the truck and trailer, our new engine on the trailer. So we need to make some room. The CL is looking pretty dirty, so we could probably, it could sleep outside for the time being while he pulls up the trailer in here to get to the plane. If you guys aren't subscribed to our automotive channel, JR Garage, I would highly recommend you do that. We have cool cars like this one on the channel where we paid $1,500 for a V12 Mercedes. This car was $131,000 in 2002, and we got it for 1500 bucks. Nothing wrong with it, clean title. Yeah, cool cars like that are on the JR Garage channel, so check that out. Let's move the cars and get ready for him to pull up with his trailer. Feels right. 